we will now proceed for uh, this parallel session. I uh, remind you that it's dedicated to Japan infrastructure experience, mainly <clears throat> through presentation by three top-ranking executives from the government administration, the banking sector, and the mayor of a major town of Japan. Uh, these executives are Mr. Keisuke Sakamoto, who is Director, PPP, Private Finance Initiative Promotion Office, Cabinet Office of Government of Japan. Please, Mr. Sakamoto, you will be welcome to come on stage and be seated. Mr. Hiroki Yasui, who is Director for Policy Planning and Coordination, Airports Government Governance Reform Unit, Planning Division, Aviation Network, Department, Civil Aviation Bureau at Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism. And finally, Mr. Yasutomo Suzuki. Mr. Suzuki is mayor of Hamamatsu, a coastal city in Honshu, Japan's main island, with an estimated population of 800,000 people. Please, gentlemen, be seated. And uh, I, I hand uh, it over to you for your presentation. And after your presentation, there will be probably a few Q&A questions and answers with the audience. Thank you very much indeed. This evening's guest, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Uh, from now, uh, I will uh, explain in Japanese. <laughs> so, uh, from now, uh, I would like my explanation to be translated into both English and French. Eh,ご紹介に預かりました。内閣府PPPPFI推進室の坂本です。I don't I represent the uh, uh, Japanese government. I would like to talk today about uh, the uh, uh, situation of uh, private partner private uh, public partnership uh, and uh, its uh, future um, and uh, uh, the policy of the uh, Prime uh, Minister's uh, office. Uh, there will be two presentations. The first one concerns the uh, concession uh, in uh, airport activity, which is under the authority of the Ministry of Territory of Land and uh, Transport. And then we're going to listen to a presentation by Mr. Suzuki, uh, the mayor of uh, uh, Amamatsu, and is going to talk about the concession in water and sewage services. Um, his city has, for the first time, introduced the concession regime in Japan. First of all, I would like uh, to speak about the uh, PPP market within the uh, Japanese economy, uh, which uh, might be of uh, great interest uh, in uh, for participants today, I mean, whether investors or entrepreneurs. So five and a half years have elapsed since uh, the uh, last government's uh, uh, announcement of uh, uh, the uh, uh, economic policy in December 2012. Uh, during that uh, uh, period, the nominal GDP increased by 58 uh, uh, trillion uh, GPY. So it has, uh, so it moved from 493 to 550. And uh, during that time, uh, uh, Japanese companies have registered record uh, profits. 
profits. We've tried to uh, multiply uh, innovations and now we have uh, 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 reached a, uh, a GDP of uh, 600 uh, trillion Japanese yen. One of the key sectors for uh, Japan's economic growth is tourism. In 2017, the number of visitors in Japan was 28,690,000 uh, with a uh, increase of 19.3% uh, uh, record high. And uh, the uh, Japanese government uh, um, makes a lot of uh, uh, initiative, economic initiatives, so as to uh, reach uh, 20 million visitors by um, uh, by uh, 2020. The highest priority in growth uh, strategy is uh, the. Uh, uh, you know, achievement of 5.0 society. The aim is to improve productivity and to speed up economic growth as well as uh, maximize uh, and to optimize the life of uh, uh, people in Japanese society based on uh, or capitalizing on uh, technology. And uh, uh, the private-public uh, uh, partnership at the very core of uh, the financial strategy uh, of Japan so as to reach this and achieve this 5.0 uh, society. Amongst the objectives, the idea is to increase uh, the scale of PPP, PFP, I service uh, by about 11.5 trillion yen uh, between uh, 2013 to 2022, and uh, uh, the uh, share of uh, the concession would be 7 million yen, which is a, a real um, achievement. So when I'm talking about the size of the, um, this, the market scale and market size, I'm including uh, the uh, uh, you know share of uh, the uh, uh, private uh, market in that period. This includes uh, the concession of airport concession. Um, the operation would uh, uh, you know go uh, on a period of uh, 30 to 44 years, and the. Uh, aggregate uh, uh, size of the companies uh, uh, between 2013-16 uh, uh, was uh, 11.5 trillion yet uh, for uh, the uh, BPP and for conception type FPI service it was about 5.6 trillion yet and the uh, uh, growth uh, strategy includes uh, action plan for PPI in key areas such as airport, water supply, uh, roads, uh, you know, uh, cultural uh, activities, harbor or cruise terminals, and uh, uh, mines facilities, as well as the uh, hydropower generation plants and uh, industrial water works, water work, works. And we're trying to uh, strengthen the mechanism so as to achieve our uh, uh, objective. So here is the revised action plan uh, for this year for the uh, PPP PIF action. First of all, policy for promoting PPP PFP, so you've got the promotion of concession projects, the promotion of public-private partnership in public real estate. Three, the promotion of effective framework uh, for uh, to priorities uh, PPP PFI projects, supporting the central and local government to establish and operate the framework to prioritize PPP PFI, and also to uh, strengthen regional capacity for PPP PFI. 
So we have uh, uh, estimates, um, of, um, you know, as far as the number of uh, projects is concerned. Today we have uh, uh, managed to achieve uh, the uh, uh, projects uh, uh, planned for airport and roads. Now, for uh, water supply projects and uh, for sewage projects, uh, we have uh, strengthened uh, our facilities and we have um, uh, done that in order to reach the uh, objectives that we set ourselves. In total, we're aiming for a market size of 21 trillion yen in terms of PPP, PFI. Uh, this will become a performance uh, indicator or benchmark. Now, in order to reach the objectives and to strengthen the approach, the Prime Minister's uh, office introduced a reform bill. The PFI Act was adopted originally back in 1999, going through a number of successive reforms. There's a clause that makes it possible to have the concession scheme introduced that was adopted in Trail in 2011. The reform of this year 2018 reform is to do with uh, the participation of public bodies and also private enterprises looking to set up PPP, PFI projects so that the state can function as a facilitator. To give you an example, the procedure for a conference center concession has been simplified and then there's another example, which is to do with the financial incentives, making it possible for local authorities uh, to reduce or eradicate the compensatory amounts if they make early repayments of uh, monies when they embark upon this sort of approach in terms of concession projects. Here you have got uh, what's been happening as regards the market since 1999, which is when the law was passed. At the end of March of this year, there were 666 projects that were registered. Let me say that the amount given here is a total of the amount included in the local authority's budget for each financial year. And all of this data has been collected by the Office of the Prime Minister for the different projects that have been announced. So the total amount is 5.5 trillion yen. Here you've got a breakdown of the sectors concerned by these 666 projects. You can see there's a wide range of areas, uh, schools, uh, hospitals, administrative buildings, uh, water, sewerage facilities, parks, and so on and so forth. And here you've got the geographical breakdown by department or prefecture. There are a number of uh, differences depending on the region you're in, but uh, generally speaking, the projects cover the entire country. On this slide, you can see the breakdown of uh, projects per category. If we take a look at the objectives, the concession represents 5.6 trillion yen. The 
Public real estate, well, projects with a profitable facility, you can see the figures here, and public real estate, 1.3. And then you have other, PPP, PFI, that's 2.2 trillion. All of the figures are in the final column. So that's the current status as regards these projects. The term concession, as used in Japan, is very similar to the scheme and setup that you have in France. So. The operating right uh, of the public facility is granted to a concessionaire, while the public entity retains ownership of the facility. The contract covers a lengthy period, and it's the concessionaire which is responsible for the investment for renewal of equipment. which means that more often than not, there are a lot of uh, projects that are very large-scale projects. Concession projects have been evolving since the PFI law was uh, amended and passed as such in 2011. Currently, there are seven airports operated under this scheme, and there are preparations underway for another 12. I th think that the details will be given shortly by the uh, representative of the Ministry of Transport. As regards roads, there's one project that's been carried out. And in water supply, there are currently six underway. For sewerage, Hamamatsu City has set up a concession for sewerage treatment. And there are some five others under consideration. As regards road management in the Aichi Prefecture, this has gone to a company to manage some eight sections of the toll road for a period of 30 years starting in October 2016. The public road body for the Aichi Prefecture receives 1,377 million yen as a concession fee in exchange for the operation of the roads. Now, if we take a look at schools and cultural facilities, there's one contract that's been signed, and there are two that are currently being negotiated in addition. MICE facilities, con two contracts have been signed. And then for social housing or public housing, six contracts have been signed. And there are two that are currently being assessed. Let me give you a, an atypical example. You, if you take a look at the photograph that's in the middle of the slide, this was a concession granted by the Ministry of Justice to uh, companies. This was following an ITT to transform the old prison into a a hotel for a period of 32 years. S 
So this went to a number of companies and the prison has been turned into a, or will be transformed into a hotel for, as I say, some 32 years. And uh, lastly, let me say something as regards risk allocation. Obviously, this is a major concern for um, potential investors and the different companies concerned. Uh, there's the risk of natural hazards, for instance. The Prime Minister's office published a recommendation concerning the operating rights for public facilities and also the rights of or the activities of concessionaires. It states inter alia that there's to be risk allocation appropriately, uh, in other words, uh, uh, an appropriate allocation between public and private sectors. In the case of force majeure, it's up to the entrepreneur to uh, assume responsibility up to the level of the amount covered by its insurance. And the public sector has to deal with everything over and beyond that. Obviously, there shouldn't be too much in the way of risk and put on the shoulders of the concessionaire. I'd like to thank you now for your attention, having allowed me to explain this to you. So many thanks for having allowed me to speak to you. Bonjour and uh, hello. Uh, I'm Mr. Uh, Yasui Hiroki uh, from uh, MLIT Japan CAB. And I will now speak to you in Japanese. I'm going to talk to you about the Japanese airport investment opportunities, and I'm delighted to be able to do this today. There are three main points I'd like to make. Here you see them on the screen. I'll begin by showing you what the concession market is like in Japan. What sort of trends and objectives we have. And then we'll take a look at the concessions in Japan particularly airport concessions, and then I'll talk about future concession projects. So this is how I will work through my presentation. Let me begin by talking to you about the situation affecting airports in Japan. In general terms, in Japan, we're seeing that there's a decline in the population. Increasingly, we're also seeing that uh, there's uh, a tendency to uh, move more to urban areas, and also there's the aging of the population. Similarly, if we take a broader brushed approach, we take a look at Asia in general, where we find that there's an increasing demand and a very accelerated demand if you take a look at these four points in my presentation, I would say that these are specificities pertaining to our airports. First of all, 
airport policy, there's been a change occurring over recent times. Particularly over the last 10 years, and in Japan, we decided that we would stop building new airports. So we had to take a look at the question of the management of existing airports. So the idea is no longer to develop airports, but to manage the airports that we have on our territory. And then we've got the proliferation of low-cost companies in Europe and elsewhere in the world. These are the companies that uh, many of you have become familiar with for a long time. But it's only in 2012 in Japan that low-cost companies really entered the market. In terms of percentages, if we take international travel, they represent some 20%. And for domestic travel, it's about 10%. In local and regional airports, that's where you tend to see a predominance of low-cost companies, where they make up some 30% of regional air travel. Thirdly, we've got also the measures that have been taken between airports and more and more open skies agreements that are being signed at national level. So this international approach is now being increasingly used in Japan. And as regards the uh, government position, we'd like to provide active support to the airports, and particularly uh, on travel to do with tourism. We're facing a decrease in population, as I've already said. Uh, so obviously we have to encourage mobility. And that's why we would like to attract more and more foreign tourists to come to Japan we feel that it's an extremely important growth strategy for our future. Here you can see the use of domestic air transport in Japan. I don't know whether you can actually read this. The figures are rather small. Until 2002, we saw that there was an increase in the number of domestic air passengers. But as of 2010, we saw that it was slightly down. And in 2012, well, this is where we saw the arrival of low-cost companies in the Japanese market. And what we saw was that, once again, there was an increase in the demand for domestic air travel. As regards international air travel, we're seeing that there's a trend for the demand to increase. If you take a look at the period around about 2000, well, there was the economic crisis, then, then there was the 9-11, um, the where there was a slight drop in demand. But generally, over the last 10 years, we have seen things increasing. And let me give you a global figure. We're talking about around about 86 million passengers uh, for uh, international air travel. Now let's take a look more specifically at foreigners coming to Japan. The point's already been made. There's an increase in the number of uh, foreign visitors to Japan, particularly over the last 10 years. There are more and more foreign travelers come to Japan. Last year, in 2017, we welcomed some 28 million foreign visitors. And this year, it's the figure's going up again. We hope that by 2020, we'll be talking about some 40 million and 2030, 60 million. So this is one of the government objectives. And uh, with this in view, we're taking a number of initiatives. Let's take a look at the breakdown of the foreign visitors coming to Japan. 75% of them come from Southeast Asia. Sorry, from East Asia. That's the majority of tourists coming to Japan. The French, 
don't quite make make up one percent of foreign visitors. The U.S. around about five percent. So these are the general figures that I can give you. And then I'd like to come to policy aspects serving to attract foreign visitors to Japan. It doesn't just concern the Ministry of Transport, obviously. We have to say that this is a global initiative being taken by the government. We've relaxed, for instance, uh, visa requirements. This started in 2013. A number of countries were concerned. Take a look at the list on the screen. You can see the Philippines, for instance. Visa conditions were relaxed, and in just one year following this measure, there was a 54% year-on-year increase in the number of uh, Philippine tourists coming to Japan. And then, if we take a look at uh, the budget for tourism in Japan, first of all, you have to realize that uh, previously there was no tourism agency in the country. It was only in 2008 that we decided to set up the Japan Tourism Agency. And since then, uh, a budget obviously was set on an annual basis, uh, and this all began in 2008. Last year, Well, over a period of 10 years, we multiplied uh, by a factor of uh, a twofold increase. We went from 5 to 10. You can see the, the net increase in the budget devoted to tourism. So, what we did was, in this context, set up a, a concession scheme for airports in Japan. I'm now going to present that to you. Let's take a look at the airports. We have 97 airports throughout the country. There are around about 127 million people living in Japan. We are an archipelago, so obviously there are quite a lot of regional airports in order to facilitate access to different parts of the country. For long-distance travel in Japan, we've got the Shinkansen, the high-speed train that already exists. So there's competition in, with, with air travel at, uh, as regards domestic travel. There are four types of airport management in the country. You can see at the bottom of the screen that as regards air traffic control, it's the Japanese government that is responsible for this. But other than that, we have four different methods for managing. First of all, for national airports, The uh, takeoff and landing strips, the runways, uh, navigation aids, and so on. In other words, the, the, the main e equipment, their management, their development, all of that is the responsibility of the government, the uh, Ministry for Territorial Affairs. But for terminals, that's the private sector that's responsible for the management. This is the situation prevailing in the 19 national airports that we have in Japan. And then if we take Narita and Kansai, these are airports that are 100% organized and managed by private sector and the private sector. And we've got four of these airports. For regional airports, it's the local authorities that are primarily in charge. 
mainly for the facilities, but for terminals, it's the private sector once again that uh, is in charge. Then we've got the fourth category, where we don't have uh, an army, strictly speaking, but we do have airports that are managed by the Ministry of Defense for self-defense activities or for civil airports, uh, and there are nine such airports in Japan. Which brings me to the question of airport concession. W what are the aims of this scheme? One of the specificities of airports in Japan, and it's the point I made earlier, is that the management of airports and, and, and facilities and the terminals is split. And this is what I've just shown you. And what we want is to have a concession scheme so that we can integrate management of the whole airport. Currently, there are around about 30 airports that are managed by the government in Japan. But if we take a look at the financial aspect of the management, we've got an overall budget that's split among the 28 airports, and this brings a number of problems with it. So through the concession system, what we'd like to see is that we find a way of avoiding these problems. The fact that it's government management means that we can't attach priorities to certain regions and certain airports. What we'd like to do is to leave the management of these airports up to the local authorities. In other words, at a local or regional level, we would have local authorities uh, being put in touch with local communities and local businesses, for instance, and there would be cooperation among them in order to support their local economy through the management of the airports, which means we'd be able to develop the network in order to stimulate air transport, and also we'd improve accessibility of the airports. At the end of the day, obviously, our goal is to revitalize local communities through this type of change in the management setup. Here we come to the way in which the airport concession would work. As I was saying, when it comes to air traffic control, it, it'll remain in the hands of the government. And as for the company that manages the terminals, that's the bottom left hand, the terminal building company. There would be a new body that would be responsible for the management of such companies. And this would be through a shareholding structure. So there would be shares in the term terminal building company. They'd be predetermined. And then for the part that's managed by the government, uh, this is where there would be an ITT. Here you can see the uh, typical timeline for the transactions. You can see that in the middle, there'll be a selection of the potential bidder. But we start by following the procedure. First of all, we sound out the market. In other words, we make sure that we know what the market situation is. And this is done well, well in advance of the decision concerning the selection. In other words, a good year beforehand. And then within the Ministry of Transport, we will publish the different implementing measures, the overall policy. The ITT will be organized and issued. And once that has been done, within about one year's time, we should be able to select the preferred negotiator. And there'll be two stages in the selection process. Certainly, this is what we've been doing to date.
the specificity of the uh, concession set up in Japan is that once the choice has been made, once the bidder has been selected, there will be a nine-month period before embarking upon operations. There's an explanation that's given on the right-hand part of the slide. This nine-month nine period is for a transition handing over period uh, during which training would be provided by the government to the successful bidder. Because here we're talking about an aeronautical activity that was previously the responsibility of the government. So this handover period will be organized by us and the government staff uh, who had previously been in charge will be the ones who will be providing the training for the, to the successful bidder. After the uh, uh, starting of the operation and uh, for uh, between three to five years, there will be still civil servants from the ministry uh, to, uh, you know, making sure that uh, the operation is uh, uh, going well. So the characteristics as regards uh, the uh, uh, Japanese concession scheme. That uh, scheme started five years ago, so we are still beginners uh, in this field. But we have already um, learned a lot, and so we've been able to improve our service to investors. As far as the uh, airport concession scheme, we've got to take into account uh, Jap Japan's uh, characteristics and uh, we and the, and you know and the way uh, the build must be uh, dealt with. We have uh, introduced four key new measures, and I'm going to talk about the first point. I security, this is the most important uh, factor. I mean, managing airport uh, means uh, uh, managing a public infrastructure. So, of course, there is an economic aspect, but uh, above all, uh, security is, is essential. Second point on which I would like to uh, focus is that the objective of uh, an airport concession scheme is to uh, revitalize uh, the uh, local economy. So the, the, there's a need for a cooperation with all local partners. This is what we would like to uh, achieve. These are important points as regards the uh, airport's concession scheme in Japan. To date, we have uh, completed a number of um, concessions with uh, Japanese investors, but also foreign investors. For instance, uh, for Kansai Airport, uh, the French company Vinci is uh, Vinci is participating in the project. As far as uh, um, Fukuoka, we've got a company from. Uh, 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 Singapore participating. What you see in red shows all the completed concession schemes. Uh, but in total, there are seven airports part of the project. and six projects are being negotiated. 
and international investors are interested or investors from the world over are interested in our uh, proposal. In this table, you can see uh, the ranking of uh, airports uh, from the point of view of the number of passengers. And in blue, uh, you have the concessions which uh, uh, have started. And in red, uh, you have uh, uh, the uh, project which is ongoing. I mean, the concession scheme which is uh, ongoing. So they are being negotiated. Now I'm going to talk to you about uh, the uh, upcoming transactions. First of all, the uh, Hiroshima airport. I don't know uh, what um, you know how you perceive Hiroshima, but two atomic bombs were dropped on uh, Japan and Hiroshima is one of the city who which uh, has uh, uh, you know received that uh, bomb so you've got lots of ruins um, you had lots of ruins and there are still some ruins um, at the very uh, center of the city and there is a Sintoist uh, temple that is uh, uh, located uh, near Hiroshima, and which is also a World Heritage, uh, uh, UNESCO's World Heritage uh, uh, piece. You've got uh, domestic uh, flights and international flights, Singapore, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Other flight the uh, destinations, and there are three million passengers using this airport at the moment. For business travelers, um, you know, you've got quite a lot of business travelers, but you've got also uh, tourists using that airport. And the, so the characteristics of uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, city is, first of all, its population, 8 million inhabitants. It's the sixth uh, most important city in Japan. It is connected with Tokyo. It takes four hours to go to uh, uh, Tokyo by uh, Shinkansen. But also there is an air link. A aircraft, um, a airline um, going to um, Tokyo, and uh, between uh, uh, to go to, to go to the center of the Hiroshima from the airport, it takes an hour. So this is one of the uh, competitive. Um, you know, or competition for the airport because you can take uh, the train and go uh, quite fast to uh, places like Tokyo. So, uh, here you've got the BDA table, and then you've got the schedule for investments on the right hand side of the slide. And next year, in March, we're going to uh, uh, start the bidding and the screening of partners. The city of Hiroshima has a number of uh, characteristics. So I talked about the talk to you about tourism, 
but there are very few European tourists in Hiroshima. No, oh, hi. でマーキングをしたのがこちらの地図でございます。Well, as far as the、um, access,、um, you know, the there's a lot of potentialities.、Um, there are six million people、uh, who live in Hiroshima, so it's a very important、uh, potential for the airport. So as far as tourists'、um, activities, there is a lot in Hiroshima. Hiroshima is part of the、uh, is on the、uh, internal sea in Japan. Temperate climate.、Uh, there are lots of、uh, tourist activities. You can,、uh, um, you know, the oysters from Hiroshima, very well known and very, very appreciated, very much liked. And here you can have the type of、uh, aircraft that are in use. Outside Hiroshima, you have also the Kyushu Island, which is、uh, very active at the moment. Lots of domestic flights.、Um, The traffic is、uh, very stable. And the Kyushu、um, Island has a long standing connection with East Asia. And it's quite, it's quite easy also to、uh, go to the ASEAN countries. On this Kyushu, Island, there are seven airports. In blue, you have uh, uh, the airport where the concessions have been signed, and but there are、uh, three, and so there is one、uh, airport project which is,、uh, you know, in the Is ongoing the bidding process, and、uh, then you've got another one, two, three, four, five airports which、uh, might be interested in the concession scheme. And the Japanese government is ready to support、uh, your investments and in Japan. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, I'm going to speak in French. I'm going to present、uh, the city of、uh, Mamatsu. Amamatsu. So it is uh,、um, in uh, uh, the archipelago and it's between the two economic uh, uh, cities, uh, Osaka and Chukan, Tokyo. And you can、uh, reach Amamatsu from Tokyo in one hour. And、uh, there are.、Uh, 800,000 inhabitants, so it's a very big city, and we are surrounded by nature. On the south, we uh, are uh, you know, looking at the Pacific uh, uh, Ocean, and uh, in uh, uh, the, uh, that's the city is surrounding, surrounded by mountains, and、uh, it is、uh, known in Japan as the, most,、uh, the nicest city to be living in. Uh, the uh, finances are very healthy and、uh, finances are very well developed, and、uh, it's very、e、nice to, to live there. And it's、uh, the second biggest city in uh, uh, Japan, and uh, it, uh, it is,、um, I mean, it's quite difficult, on the other hand, to、uh, manage that、uh, big area. For instance, as far as the infrastructure is concerned, Uh, the, uh, the, it has the, the biggest number of kilometers of roads, uh, and uh, uh, managing uh, water is also 
very challenging. But before moving on to this uh, uh, subject, I would like to present um, my city. Um, Mamatsu is very well known for its uh, musical instruments industry, Yamama, Yamaha, Kawai, um, and many uh, uh, companies have their headquarters in uh, uh, in Amamasu, and uh, there are about, uh, investment about 13 billion euros invested uh, in uh, our city. Uh, we are not only famous for uh, we are famous for for our uh, transport, but also for uh, the phototonics, um, you know, uh, uh, industry. We promote that industry. It is uh, a new generation industry. For instance, Amamasu Photonics has developed a, uh, a silicone detector, so it's SSD uh, silicon, which uh, certainly uh, help obtaining the price, uh, Nobel Prize. We are the crucible for eel uh, um, product, and we have uh, new forestry uh, resources, and uh, there are lots of uh, forestry industries. So we want to start a new project, and this is really uh, what characterizes the inhabitants of Amamatsu. Amamatsu is the hub of uh, musical instrument industry in Japan. Many international known, internationally known uh, companies such as uh, Yamaha, Kawai, um, in 1991, to celebrate uh, the uh, 80, year, 80 years of uh, um, industry on instrument industry in our city, we launched the uh, international piano competition, and it's now uh, has been organised every three years, and it's the 10th anniversary this year. Many international uh, pianists have started their career in uh, my city. And on the right-hand side there, uh, you can see Rafał Blischacz, a Polish uh, pianist, and who here is uh, playing at the uh, International Piano Competition. And in 2003, he has participated in the fifth edition of our competition and won it. In 2005, he had participated in the 15th edition of the Chopin competition, and he won it as well. Uh, we are recognized for these uh, musical activities, and for the first time we have been elected uh, and is, we've been accepted in uh, the uh, network of creative cities, um, uh, UNESCO network. So how could we uh, define our city beyond those uh, characteristics? I can say that uh, we are a, a sort of model of uh, the nation. We are the epitome of Japan. We have varied services, and this is quite different, actually, uh, from uh, the city of Osaka or, or, or Tokyo. We quite... Uh, you know, we quite a sort of uh, uh, small scale Japan. We are facing uh, aging society. We have uh, uh, to uh, manage infrastructure and we have lots of financial operations. But I mean, if Amamatsu realizes a sustainable urban management, it will become a model of highly motivated regional city. So that you can have a better idea of our uh, city, I just am showing you a photograph. So you can see uh, there a view of the north part and the center of uh, the city. What you can see, you see, you can see at the, at the horizon, the mountains, and uh, uh, at the foothill of the mountain, you have uh, cedars and cypress, Cedars and uh, Cyprus, and you've got also a industrial and farming uh, plain. Now, I would like to talk about water. Water in uh, Amamatsu comes from the mountains, um, and in particular from the Ten Ryu uh, city, uh, sorry, river. And uh, it means the dragon which uh, uh, flies in the, in the fly. So this uh, um, river. Uh, has meanders, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, 
redolent of the movement of a dragon. So this is the water source for the 800,000 inhabitants in the city. So you can see here uh, the uh, sewage treat treatment plant. And there is a, uh, a beach which is uh, 30 minutes away from uh, the center of uh, a city where you've got all the uh, office blocks and uh, surfers. Surfers are very interested uh, in this because they um, can really um, be happy both at work and uh, in their private life. So um, amongst the uh, biggest uh, sewer treatment uh, plants you've got uh, um, you've got two sewage treatment plants so this is the sort of outline of uh, our city now you've got these information I'm going to uh, talk about the subject of my presentation ie the uh, water and sewages uh, sewage services so there are three challenges as far as uh, uh, water services are concerned first of all there is an increase in demand for the replacement of pipelines and facilities the water supply facilities were built between the 60s and the 70s, i.e. during the high growth period, and the sewage facilities were built in the 80s, between the 80s and the and the 2000s, and uh, which means that in the next 50 years we'll have to uh, have a large scale replacement of these pipes and facilities. So we also have a decrease in water consumptions and tariff revenues due to the declining population and dissemination of water-saving equipment. The water supply amount and water fee income has decreased. And actually, uh, according to the future outlook of the city, the water supply amount is expected to decrease by about 25% in 30 years. Third uh, challenge, the decrease or the decline in working age population. It is more and more difficult to secure technical staff uh, because the uh, and these uh, you know jobs are, are, are quite a number, and so we've got to uh, invest for the replacement of uh, these uh, uh, technical equipments, and so we will uh, need more staff, and uh, we will also have to use uh, um, you know um, uh, artificial intelligence and ICT to. Uh, uh, establish a new mechanism to pass down technical skills. So how do we maintain the sustainability of uh, with limited um, uh, amount? And these are the challenges that uh, we have to take up in Japan. In Traditionally, uh, the uh, installation and management of uh, water equipment were dealt with by public uh, authorities. Uh, but very often, the public uh, the private sector had also uh, participated in those activities. But there are a number of uh, rules of pu procurement for pub for uh, procurement. You have, for instance, the principle of uh, um, uh, procure procurement by competitive bidding. And um, so the uh, um, uh, administrative preparation, design work, quality, uh, quantity survey, and all this is uh, quite a burden, both in time and money. Then you've got the second principle of single-year budget. It's uh, The contract procedures are carried out after the budget is established. Therefore, constructions will be reduced in the first quarter, and they will be um, uh, concentrated at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, it's a burden for the contractor and it reduces the uh, potential of activity for uh, the uh, companies. And the third principle is stipulation of separated or divided orders. We have to separate uh, orders uh, as much as possible. It is, uh, uh, it, it, there is, it is a limit for collective ordering in multiple fiscal years and execution of large-scale construction. On the right-hand side, you've got a summary of the uh, current management system in Amatsu. So every three years, you've got a contract with private companies um, and they are renewed. So the improvement can only be done on a very small scale. And so it's quite difficult also to introduce innovation in such a system. So this is, and it's there that the concession scheme is very valuable. As you were told, 
before uh, in, uh, in 2011 there was a, a re revision of the law and the concession scheme was made possible in Japan so here are the advantages indeed it's possible not to uh, uh, be burdened by the constraint of uh, public orders it can uh, reduce uh, the cost which is a, a re reduction of the burden on residents and it improves the productivity by introducing state-of-the-art technology And yet, in the sewage um, and uh, water treatment um, uh, area, there's been very few concessions. Uh, how come? Because, I mean, the uh, local authorities uh, are aware of the problems that they have as far as water is concerned. Mm, but it doesn't seem to be an, uh, an emergency for them, and uh, uh, therefore they're not very... Uh, um, enthusiastic about the uh, concession scheme and the wait and see. So as a mayor, I decided to uh, take the plunge. And uh, since uh, 2007, when I came into office, I started lots of uh, uh, administrative and budgetary uh, reforms, the reduction of staff, of labor cost, uh, the reduction of subsidies, the, uh, ref the reform of criteria. And we have uh, reduced, uh, you know, the uh, uh, total municipal uh, bonds by more than 90 billion yen in order to make our finance more healthy. We have uh, also got an A1 um, uh, scale or, um, from, uh, a, from rating, rating from uh, a Moody Japan. And so the, what am I tackling? Uh, why am I tackling this reform? It's because, uh, um, you know, today we are in a phase where maintenance is very important. So we've got to act now. Uh, we've got to accept that our equipment and the facilities are getting older. So we've got to anticipate this and act before the aging has gone too far. Now, I'm going to present our concession projects in a more practical way. Um, April 80, uh, 2018 uh, was the first uh, concession project in Japan in our city. And uh, this uh, concession uh, scheme is in line with the law, i.e. that uh, uh, the ownership of uh, uh, the uh, uh, facilities is in uh, public hands, but the management is uh, carried out by the private sector. We, I'm going to present to you the uh, 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 concession project in Seyen district. So what are the um, outlines of this project? There are 11 treated districts. Uh, some areas uh, have a, a ability or a volume of treated uh, uh, sewage of uh, 8,000 cubic meters per day, some of 250,000 cubic meters per day. Um, it, uh, there is a district which uh, is, and CN district is uh, the biggest area as far as the sewage equipment is concerned. So Veolia Japan has uh, um, been chosen um, and uh, this group has uh, uh, created a, uh, a company with uh, specific uh, uh, um, objectives um, and uh, it concerns a uh, water treatment uh, facility and two pumping stations. Uh, the project uh, duration is 20 years and uh, um, Amamatsu and Watersefoni is going to uh, look after all this and the total project cost is uh, 51.4 billion yen and as I told you it is the users who by their fee are going to um, um, make sure that the uh, company um, recovers its uh, investment so uh, this the capacity of treatment is two 100,000 cubic meter per day. The average in Japan is about 20,000, so it's a very large scale uh, facility. Of course, as we are, you know, uh, on the front of the uh, um, um, the Pacific Ocean, there is a, a risk of tsunami, and so uh, there's been a, a, a 
a provision uh, forecast of, catastro of disasters, and uh, we have a, a special structure which is protecting our facilities from in case of tsunami. So this is a partial concession, which means that only the uh, sewage treatment plant and the two pumping stations are uh, concerned. And uh, uh, the, um, um, you know, the... Um, financial management of uh, subscribers is going to be managed by the city. And uh, the uh, operation of the machines and uh, uh, the uh, exploitation of the machines uh, were done by uh, uh, in a different way. So do know that uh, purification re requires microorganism organisms and they need oxygen. And so the facility requires a l big quantity of uh, 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 electricity. So we're going to introduce new machines, more uh, adapted uh, machines, which are going to be able to reduce the consumption of electricity and therefore increase the life cycle of this equipment. We're going to introduce uh, ICT to uh, create a platform uh, which means that we'll be able to uh, use the facilities in a smarter way. And we want to also cooperate with uh, local industries, local economies, so as to revitalize local economy. If we, for instance, launch uh, a project like uh, you know, the farming of eels, uh, we are going to organize uh, events uh, on the uh, issue of uh, uh, water treatment. And so we hope that we're going to be able to uh, save uh, uh, about 65 million uh, euros in 20 years. And 2.5 billion yen will be paid to Amamatsu City as a concession fee. So part of the savings are going to be beneficial to um, um, the, to the city dwellers, but also uh, to the companies. So we can see that this type of a concession project is a win-win project, both for the public and for the private sector. So this shows you how things will function. It's a concession project that started in April. We needed a good year to prepare it and uh, to place the contract. And thanks to this, the project started and turned out to be a real success. Monitoring is carried out by Hamampadzu Water Symphony, but also by the city and by a third party body. According to the criteria, the monitoring is carried out every quarter and every year. This brings me then to water supply services. We're also thinking about having a concession system for water supply. In our city, the services have been in operation since 1931. In other words, even before the purification plants came into being. We've got two major purification plants in different parts of the city, Joko and O'Hara. Uh, you can see the blue area, which is the water supply area, that they get the water. We've got a lot of mountains. They're shown up in green on the diagram. And some 36 water pipelines uh, serve the people in the area. And uh, just last year, all of this was brought together and unified. For the project on water treatment, it was only one particular facility that was concerned, but for water supply, all are concerned. Water supply services began before water treatment, and that is why the facilities are much older. So there's a real need to renovate all of the facilities. And this has to be done safely and efficiently on a large scale. In the municipality, we decided to embark upon a management plan for the water supply services of Hamamatsu. And in that plan, which is going to cover the next 50 years, we took account of the durability of the facilities. The idea is to uh, make sure that they will last a very long time. In 50 years, we think that we're going to have to invest for the replacement of the facilities around about 280 or 290 million yen. In other words, each year we're going to have to invest uh, over 5 billion. 
1.4 times more than over the last 10 years on average. We would have a concession period of, say, 25 years, which is half of the uh, management plan for the city. The investment for replacement is going to be 145 billion. Now, through the concession for water supply, we expect that we'll be able to bring down the costs. It'll also make it possible for us to introduce ICTs into our management as developed by the private sector, and this will also bring down costs. Water infrastructure is essential for the population. Efficiency, effectiveness, that's one thing, but what is much more important is uh, safety and stability in water supply. So these are our main concerns as things stand today. First of all, there's the Water Act in Japan. It's, it's a very fundamental uh, law as regards water supply, and it's going to be uh, reformed and revised. It's being uh, currently debated by the Parliament today. Secondly, how we can really have comprehensive delegation of pipeline, the pipeline network. And thirdly, continuation of services uh, in times of natural disaster. As of tomorrow, we'll be meeting the people representing the water supply uh, sector in France. So we'll see what's being done at international level. Hamamatsu is a small-scale model of what we have at national level. And that means that we will be pursuing our measures in order to give a fillip to Japan, starting from Hamamatsu. And I hope that you're going to be following closely all of our initiatives. And I'd like, at this point, to thank you for your attention. Maybe a few questions from the audience to Mr. Sakamoto or Yasui or Suzuki, please. Yes. And maybe your name and uh, Pierre Sorbet from uh, HSBC. Uh, I would like to ask a question to Mr. Mayor of uh, uh, the Hamamatsu City. Uh, your, your, your intervention was very interesting for us French because uh, your procurement code uh, looks like us. I mean, uh, 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 split into, into small pieces, difficult to, to integrate innovation, cost for that. And uh, I think very impressive that to see that you are, you are able to, to, to think newly. My question is, uh, do you communicate with your citizens, your administré, on, on these uh, reforms, and do they understand them and they, and do they approve them? Hi, and all. Yes, that's a very interesting question for us. It's true that we're involved in active communication with our population. In Japan, there's an awful lot of um, dependence in terms of the public administration, and particularly when it comes to water supply, water services uh, in general. It's the local administration that was responsible for all of this. So people felt that water is a crucial part of their lives, and it's the public bodies that should continue to manage this. Uh, so that there's sort of considerable general interest uh, among the Japanese as regards this. And we're trying to pursue our communication exercise using a different num number of different facilities in order to explain why we're doing what we're doing so that people can understand and, and come on board with these initiatives. Water is vital for life. And I was saying that in Japan, people feel it's up to the public bodies to manage water. But the water business in Japan is really increasing. If you take a look at supermarkets, for instance, you see bottled water, mineral water, sold in vast quantities. So users prefer the bottled water rather than the tap water. Obviously, we have waters such as Evian and, and other French or for other foreign brands. Now, what am I trying to say? I think it's a question of image, really. They think it's up to the public bodies to manage all of this, but I think they're willing to 
open their arms to the, the, the private sector, and I'm sure I'll be able to convince them to go down that line. Yes, uh, Michel Cochon from Paris Place. I have a question for Mr. Yasui about the privatization of airports. Um, do you have any criteria about the nationality of uh, the investor or the uh, operator of uh, the uh, airport? Or do, do you consider any offer as uh, equivalent? Uh, or w would you pay attention to a sort of equi equilibrium of uh, uh, sponsors being involved in uh, uh, airport management in, in Japan? Thank you for that question. Well, first of all, as regards Kansai Airport that's in Osaka, it's the first time that we've had a concession project. We had, first of all, to have a company that could embark on sound management of an airport. I mean, there are national airports where we've got uh, concession projects as well that are, that are in the pipeline. What's most important for us is continuity of operations. So we would hope that there's a certain amount of experience, or rather, we don't need special experience to manage airports. But if we take a look at the, 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 the projects of the past, if the bidders have faced problems, for instance, concerning what they've done in the past, then we'll keep a weather eye out. But we don't have any specific criteria. We would hope that all investors would be interested in our projects because we're interested in all investors. Uh, we are, our debate now has come to a stop. We'll have to prepare the next panel. Let me thank you on your behalf, Mr. Sakamoto, Mr. Yasui, and Mr. Suzuki. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen.